Right, we've now built the uh, circuit board as you've seen. We're now going to build a little motor for it. What I've actually got there, as you probably can see, 15mm uh, MDF. Went down to our local DIY store and got some of this little piping. As you can see, nothing special. Just a piece of PVC piping. Uh, must be uh, non conductive plastic or whatever. You could use metal and put a piece of tape around it if you want, but uh, I recommend this stuff. Drilled an appropriate hole for it. Not going into all the measurements because I don't know what size of materials you're going to be using. So we'll just tap that in there, like so. There you go, nice tight fit. Same with that one. Tap that in there. Nice tight fit. There's your little bobbin. So uh, we'll just pause there and I'm going to put four little nails in there to uh, put the tappings on. As you can see, I've just pulled that back off just to put the four nails in. I'm actually going to shorten those nails. You can see that little tack. They are brass actually, not... Uh, I suppose steel one was worked, just I happen to have brass ones in stock. So just trim down, put it back on your coil. Like I said, you can super glue them in place if you want. The next thing we're going to deal with is the core. Right, for the core, a little bit that's going to go inside there, is we're going to use this stuff. Now, um, I've heard people call it welding rod. Well, to England, most welding rods have got like a coating on them that we use for art welder. This is actually, when they're referring to that, this is what they're referring to. This is actually welding rod for gas oxyacetylene. Right, how do we do it? Set up a little jig like that for the length that you want. So measure the length of your coil on there for the length of the actual units you want them to go. Place it on, nice and square. And then cut. You can see one, put the next one up against a piece of timber and cut. And see you'll get them all exactly the same. So I'll come back to that in a few seconds. There you go, all our rods, all now, all our core centre core bits, all now cut to the same length. And we now just fit them in. Just literally plonk them in. No particular arrangement. Now the last one, all I do with that, or what I would do, is just file the end, like so, so you end up with a point on it, I don't know if you can actually see that on this camera, bang it in the centre, get your little tapping stick, and literally drive it in as though you were now, tap the whole thing square, like so, and there you have it. Notice on this one I've gone sticking out about 2.5 mil or it's just seeing a bit closer at actually smacking the side of the coil that's all that is try and make sure that's square there's your back now just pour some super glue in the top and bottom just hold them in position so that's the core super glued in now so just to quickly recap length of the actual core center the plastic bit if you like 65 centimeters these are actually 12 centimeters i thought there was 15 the 12 centimeters and that's about 12 centimetres depth as well. The core centre itself, outer is 15 centimetre, inner centre is 12 centimetres. So the inner inner diameter of the core is 12 centimetres. The outer diameter of the core is 15 centimetres. And now we're going to wind 500 turns or something like that on there by filia. I'll explain that in a few seconds. Now, to wind in the coils, we're obviously going to do a, a bifilia, which means two wires wrapped together on the same core. So if you can imagine us winding both them onto there, that would be a bifilia coil, if, it, if these were coils. Right, the first one is actually a lot thinner than the Bedini calls for. I'm using this for the trigger wire. Uh, I use it in mine, it works very well. Um, it's 0.224 millimeters and this one is again not the same as what Bedini calls for so I would suggest you use what suggests uh, this is actually a 22 SWG which is 0 0.710 millimeters so we're going to wind that now and just to start we're actually going to tin the ends of these so again just tin these in the same way as I did 
be somebody doing that circuit. Right, now both they're tinned, what we're going to actually do is we're actually going to write on this coil, on the end of this coil here, on the, we're going to put S, which means start, on those two. So th that's where we actually start, going to start the winding. So these two we've just tinned are going to be soldered to end of them. So we're going to put that as the trigger wire, and that has the run coil. So we'll put an R. So ST means start of the trigger coil, and S means start of the run coil. So I'll now get on and solder those in the relevant positions. Right, next stage, they're soldered on, if you can actually see that. Is we now oops, pull those together, tuck them down like so, get a piece of tape, and just tape them to where you see them. What you're going to do is wind those two together as bifilia, round, round, and just keep going until we're done X number of turns. Uh, I believe about 500 turns. Um, it's not really relevant as far as I'm concerned, providing your homage is correct. But we'll stick to what Bedini says, um, and I think that was 450 to 550 turns, something around there. So I'll get on with doing that and come back to you. Well, I decided to run all my wire out because I want to recover this. So in other words, when I've done this demonstration, I'm going to strip it all down anyway. Unless somebody wants to give me 50 quid for the whole thing working. <laughs> Joking. Um, so I'm now. Uh, so this has actually got 800 turns on this of both wires, and I'm now just going to do the same with them on them two as before when I did them two. As you can see, that's the coil finish. Now we're just going to put some tape around this area here just to protect them against any solder or anything like that may drop on them. So we've actually got, as you can see, we've got two turns now. We've actually got the run, if you like, the run part of the coil and the trigger side. So now you know that's the start, and that's the start of the two coils. Very important to know that, because that's important to where it goes on the circuit. If you get those the wrong way around, things won't work as they should. Probably would still work, but not as, as, as it should. You might find that one or two of your circuits that you've done have, uh, don't seem to be as good as other people's. That might actually be the problem. As you can see, that's more or less the coil finished. And the next video coming up is the rotor. This is one that I had off for another one I was going to build. It's actually got a few more holes than I require. This is what's coming up in the next video, building the rotor. I'm probably able to actually see it running as well in the next video.